pause, Jin Woo asked, Where's Chi Ying? Chi Ling looked around, and indeed, there wasn't a shadow of that young martial guard. Perhaps because incidents upon incidents kept happening in the heavens, the palace of Ling Wen was so busy it was going to fly away, and Ling Wen herself also had a few more dark circles under her eyes. She said, It's been a long time since Chi Ying came to these meetings. We've never been able to connect with him. Some heavenly officials on the side clicked their tongues and said, Where did that little brat run off to again? Not here again, so envious that he doesn't need to attend all these meetings. Since we do not know Chi Ying's whereabouts, once we find him, we will let you know and have the two of you coordinate, Jun Wu said. Xie Lian inclined his head in acknowledgement. Yes, my lord, he said. The mortal realm was in the midst of autumn. The weather was chilly, and so does chilly inside Puchi Shrine. Although Shillian wore just the one layer, he didn't feel cold. However, on the way home, he still used the money he made from collecting scraps to buy two new sets of robes for Lang Ying. Hua Chang had returned to the ghost city, and Chi Rong ran away with Guzi and To. So now, there was only Lang Ying left in Puchi Shrine. It had felt cramped before, but now it suddenly became deserted. As he walked from afar, Xie Ling could see Lang Ying sweeping in front of the shrine silently, raking the fallen golden leaves into a pile. Maybe it was all in his mind, but Lang Ying used to slouch, coiled in fear and nervousness. Now his limbs seemed to be stretched out, finally assuming the appearance of a cheerful boy. And Shivian couldn't help but feel heartened. He approached and took the broom and was just about to bring him inside when the villagers, who had been hiding in wait for some time, all ambushed him. Aunties and grandpas, uncles and sisters, all clamored around him. Dao Zhang, you're back, they shouted. Did you go collect scraps in town again? You've worked hard, you've worked hard. Um, how come we haven't seen Xiao Hua lately? Yeah, yeah, we haven't seen him for days. We miss the little guy. Xie Lian smiled awkwardly and said, Xiao Hua went back home. Huh? The village had asked, puzzled. Which home? I thought that this was Xiao Hua's home. Isn't he living with you? No, no, Shilin replied. He only came over to play. Now that we're all busy, we parted ways. After that night, Hua Chang had hounded him for answers, but Shilin was stubbornly adamant that the two only had a fight. Now that Mount Tonglu had reopened, Hua Chang had more on his plate. If a new Supreme Ghost King really emerged, it would mean an assault on all three realms. Hua Chang and Blackwater, although one was flashy and the other low-key, they both had their own styles and more or less knew their place and kept themselves in order. But who knew what kind of creature would emerge this time? What if Mount Tong Lu birthed a madman like Chi Rong who would fight them for their domains? That would be rather difficult to deal with. Thus, Shilin used the excuse that he was busy and said the two best not see each other for the time being and focus on their own duties. Then, the two bid farewell amiably. Although it seemed sudden and cold, like he turned his back on a friend, Shilin really didn't know what else to do. He didn't have the confidence that he could hide his feelings right now. Just then, behind him, Lang Ying suddenly spoke up. Fire, he said. Only then did Shilin realize 
that while he was pacing out, lost in thought, he accidentally took up the pot and spatula and ruined all the meat and vegetables he had just brought back to Poochie Shrine. The fire under the pot was meters high, almost scorching the ceiling, and Shilin hastily slapped at the flames to put it out. However, he slapped too hard and the entire stove collapsed. After much rumbling, Shailin stood there dazed with a pot in hand, not knowing what to do. It was just around mealtime, and the villagers were all holding their bowls, eating happily outside their doors. Surprised by the ruckus, they all came around again. What's happened? What's happened? they asked. Daojang, did your place blow up again? Shailin quickly opened the window and said, It's nothing. It's nothing. He coughed. The village head came over to take a look. This is an absolute tragedy, he said. Dao Zhang, I think it's best if you call Xiao Hua back. Wordless for a moment, Xianian said. It's all right. After all, he's not from my household. When he snapped out of it, Lang Ying had already started to help him clean up the mess on the ground and a plate of something vibrantly red and purple was on the table. It was randomly plated when he was zoning out. If the thing he made last time was named Love for All Seasons Due, then this time it should be named Fried Riot of Colours. But other than Hua Chan, there was probably no second person on this earth who could swallow the stuff. Shailin himself couldn't bear the sight of it and turned around to wash the pot, rubbing his forehead. Never mind, don't eat it, he said. Throw it away. However, after he finished washing the pot and turned around, he saw Lang Ying, who had taken the plate, had already silently eaten the food. Stunned, Shilin immediately went over to stop him and held him by the shoulders. God, are you all right? he asked. Do you feel bad anywhere? Lan Ying shook his head. Since his face was completely wrapped in bandages, his expression was hidden. Even Chirong and Blackwater would lose their minds when they ate what Shilin cooked, but Lan Ying was actually able to handle it. Just how hungry was he? Or did his strength suddenly increase? Shilin forced a smile, then cleaned up and went to bed. There were two mats in Poochie Shrine, one for each person. When Shilin was reminded that the mat beneath him was laid upon by both him and Ho Chang together, he couldn't sleep. His eyes were wide awake, but he didn't dare to toss and turn lest he rouse Lang Ying. After much internal struggle, he was just thinking that he might as well go out for a breath of fresh air when suddenly he heard the window creak. Someone had softly pushed open the wooden frame and hopped inside. Shailin's back was facing the window. He lay there on the ground on his side, shocked. Just what kind of person would be so harsh on themselves as to come steal from Poochie's shrine? Wasn't this just labor without any return? That person was light on their feet, extremely skilled. If not for someone like Shailin, who was extraordinarily sharp in his senses, no one would have noticed them. Once he hopped in, he ran straight for the donation box. Shailin immediately remembered that the donation box was full of gold bars before. Was this person here for the gold? But those gold bars had long since been given to Ling Wen to have her find their master. Listening attentively, Shailin realized that that person wasn't actually cracking the lock, but was stuffing something, one after the other, into the donation box. After that individual had finished with their work, they seemed to be looking to hop out the window to leave. Shilin mentally plotted, thinking that he'd follow after that person once they were out, to see where they were going and who they were. Yet, unexpectedly, when that person passed the altar table 
and saw it filled with plates. They seemed to be hungry. They didn't think twice before chowing down on that leftover fried riot of colours, stuffing a few mouthfuls down their throat. The next second, there was a loud thud, and they were knocked out on the ground. Shailene immediately turned over and sat up. I've been saved some trouble, he said. He lit up the lights to look. On the ground was a purple-faced figure lying flat. Shailene hastily went to the rescue, pouring large amounts of water down his throat before that person finally came to. The first thing he uttered when he woke was, What the hell was that thing? Shailene pretended not to hear and chided solemnly. Your Highness cheeing, you really are too rash stuffing whatever you find in your mouth without knowing what it is. That youth had a straight nose and deep brows, his head full of raven black curly hair. Who else could it be but the martial god of the West, Chuan Yijin? He glared and said, How would I know that anyone would actually poison their own food offered in their own shrine? Shailene rubbed his forehead and opened the donation box to see that it was filled to the brim with gold bars. Was it also you who filled the box the last time? Shailene asked. Chuanijin nodded. Shailene responded. Why are you giving me all of this? Because I have a lot, Chuanijin replied. Truthfully, even if you wouldn't say it, Shailene could probably guess that this was most likely because at the mid-autumn banquet, Shailene had slung out a chopstick to cut down the curtains of the stage. Take those back with you, Shailene said. I won't accept rewards without having done anything. Chuan Yijin didn't say anything, very obviously not listening. Shailene didn't know whether to laugh or cry, but just then, Lang Ying spoke up coldly. He's telling you, to take those away. When had he sat up? Shailene looked back to glance at him, feeling strange. In the past, Lang Ying had basically made himself invisible, desperately shrinking into the ground. So why did he say so much without prompting today, and using such unfriendly tones as well? But he didn't think too much. He figured, if anything, he could just give the box to Ling Wen to shove it back on Chuan Yijin. He straightened his expression and said, Your Highness, you've come just in time. You didn't attend the meeting at the Great Martial Hall today, but Jin Wu has given us a mission. Have you seen the scroll? Never mind, it's all right. I know that you haven't looked through it. I reviewed it already. This time, we're a team, and the creature we're responsible for is called the Brocade Immortal. The Venerable of Empty Words was called a Venerable because people didn't dare to call it a rogue, a hellion, or an annoying devil so directly. It was tentative flattery. So why was the Brocade Immortal venerated as an immortal? This was because according to legends, that creature once truly possessed the ability to become a god. Legends say that many centuries ago, there was a young man in some ancient kingdom. Although dumb and foolish by nature, his intellect no better than that of a six-year-old child. Once on the battlefield, he was no longer the same. His martial skills were extraordinary, and he was also brave and kind. When two kingdoms collided in battle, his kingdom was able to claim overwhelming victories because he charged on the front line. But because he was mentally weak and had no family, all the rewards he gained from battle were taken by others, leaving him penniless. No household were willing to have their daughters marry such a man, and very few girls were willing to come close. That young man was also inexperienced on this point. Ever since he was young, he had never made any contact with ladies, never daring to speak a word. However, this person possessed the potential to ascend, and he should have risen to the heavens in a few years. At 
At first, it didn't matter if Noah Wells liked him. But the sad thing was, he still fell in love with a girl, and he fell deeply. On the day of his birthday, that girl sewed him a brocade robe as a gift. Although it was a brocade robe, it was extremely bizarre. It was more like a hard pocket. This was the first time in that young man's life that he had received a gift from a girl he loved, filled with exalted joy plus his natural stupidity. He didn't notice anything strange with it, eagerly pulling the brocade robe over his body. There weren't any sleeves for the arms to go through, so he asked his beloved girl, how come my arms can't stretch out? That girl smiled cheerfully and said, This is my first time sewing, so I'm not very skilled. But if you don't have any arms, then this won't be a problem. Thus, the young man raised a weapon and chopped off his arms. Now, the robe fit. However, it wasn't enough, and he asked again, How come my legs can't stretch out? That girl replied, if you don't have any legs, then this won't be a problem. Thus, this young man asked another to chop off his legs as well. Finally, he asked, How come my head can't peek up? The conclusion was easily imaginable. Originally, Shilin had also thought that the brocade immortal was perhaps a monster or a demon wearing a brocade robe. It turned out it was actually the robe itself. When Mount Tonglu reopened and millions of ghosts were roused, someone had stolen away that robe. Having been smeared by the obsessed blood of that young man, the brocade robe was forged into an exceedingly malicious and powerful spiritual device. Throughout the centuries, it changed hands amongst ghosts who used it to cause harm. Therefore, one should never accept any old, used clothing from unknown origins. If you are to run into someone who wishes to gift you a brocade robe on the street in the middle of the night, never take it. For should you wear this brocade robe, you will become a pig for slaughter. Of course, this is only a legend and sounded rather outlandish. The stories could very well be made up by people who simply extrapolated from the unique nature of the brocade robe. Nevertheless, this brocade immortal must be stopped. They must not let it go to Mount Tonglu.